everybody. We'd like to welcome you to another episode in our Canvas PD series uh, that we've been offering this school year. And we have covered the Canvas agreements um, step by step by step with a video for each one where we have brought on guest teachers. And today we have a guest teacher, Max, who's going to be talking to us about the use of Canvas groups. So I want to make sure you have access to the slides. And you can see the bit.ly there on the bottom right hand corner. And it is case specific. So make sure Canvas and levels are both capitalized when you go ahead and type that in. Um, I am Carrie Cooner and joined by Chris Giles and Nicole Carter. And we're all part of the digital curriculum team and working with um, Canvas implementation this year and other years as well. All right, what we've been doing is we have been recording episodes for each of our Canvas agreements and breaking those down by levels. So whether you're a beginner using Canvas, you've used it for a year or so, or you are one of our advanced users, we have different levels here for you. And right now we are actually all the way over here. This is a level three concept of how to utilize groups in Canvas. And this is episode two of level three, and it is hot links there for you. So if you just click right in that table of contents, it'll take you to our um, agenda for today. So this is what we are hoping to cover. And during our session, we're going to talk about groups. Max is going to tell us how he's used them in his classroom. And then we'll have time at the end for anyone in session to um, ask questions about groups. So here we go, Chris, I'll hand it off. Yeah, I want to say um, thanks for joining us today and, and definitely a big shout out to uh, Max for, for like, I only asked him like an hour and a half ago to join us today. So he's, he totally said he would join out. Uh, just to clarify, you can see my screen. You should be able to see a Canvas course with tons of people in it. Uh, and these are not students, by the way, these are teachers. Uh, so no stress about the, the privacy of people. It's just teachers. So uh, anyways, so today we're talking about groups. And again, Max is going to get a chance to share exactly how he's been doing it and his experience and then the benefits. But before we do that, just a, a, a few like um, basic strategies on how to create the groups. Um, and then we'll throw it over to, to um, Max. So as far as my groups, I'm going to start in people. So when you get to your course, you're going to see all the people. And these are all of the students who are registered the course. Uh, and typically, um, what you're going to do is basically think through the process. So there's a difference between a group and a group set. So a group set is basically you think about your, your large project. So for example, if you're a, a fifth grade teacher or even sixth grade teacher and you're using the BFG novel in your class and you want all of your students to be working in groups based on that topic, the BFG, then you could create a group called the BFG. Um, or if you had um, other projects, you can name it however you want to. And then when you do that, when you do create your group name, your group set, you can allow students to sign up, uh, to self sign up, which means you're done. You don't really have to do anything else. The beauty is students will select and be put themselves in groups um, or require groups to be in the same section. This is one of the questions that Nicole and I were talking about earlier. Can we allow students, if I'm a high school teacher, do I want period one to be working with period two? And this is where that important becomes. If I do allow self uh, sign up, then I can require the students to be in the same class period or say, it's okay if you work across the different class periods. And then down below the structure, well, how many groups do you want? And how many people do you want those in your groups? And so this is where the magic of Canvas will take place for you. Uh, again, if you don't allow self sign up, you'll notice that when as soon as I change my view, it's gonna to go to the structure and the structure is a little different. How many, do I want to split the groups into how many or do I want to split students into how many groups, uh, I mean, how many groups overall or how many students per group? So it depends on how many kids you have in your class. Uh, or I can create the groups later uh, and then I can assign leaderships if I want to. When I'm done, my groups could be created automatically uh, or again, students can sign up for the groups um, for the course. I also can look at my groups and go, you know what? I'm going to create my group set. In this case, this is called Blend It. Uh, I already created some individual groups. So here is an individual group within that group set. How many kids do I want in that group? I want a maximum of three or a maximum of four. And then well, once I have my groups, I can actually physically start dragging students into those groups. So if I haven't chosen self sign up, to automatically do it or let students sign up from the phone. I have to manually move those students to those groups. And so I could go ahead and say, okay, Colette, you're gonna go over to this group. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna move Sandra out of this group and I'm gonna move her into blended group two. And so you can move students around in your group. 
now workflow middle school high school versus elementary uh, if you're a middle school or high school teacher you potentially have 150 to 170 students so do you want to be actively moving students between groups all the time i probably would not want to it would be a lot of students to have to shift into move because you're talking all of your students moving those into groups and that's too much for for me to do i wouldn't want to do that so i might think of these as long-term projects like four weeks out and so now I'm not moving those students back and forth or shuttling back and forth. If I'm a, an elementary teacher with only 25 or 30 students, I could potentially move those groups around every week because I'm only moving 25. Well, maybe I'm not moving 25 students, maybe I'm only moving five or six students. And so the groups are fluid for you to use, but at the same time, more students means more management. Um, so again, and I can see which groups are set up into uh, and how many students I have. It tells me how many students I have. Uh, when I do click the three dots on the groups, when you create a group, something that may not be known to teachers is the group actually gets a homepage. A group is like a course within Canvas. So you actually create it an almost like individual Canvas course for that group. They get their own homepage. They have their own announcements. I can see here's the people who are in uh, this group right here. And so it actually is a very powerful tool to use. However, I'm just gonna let you know up front, but we've had some instances where students have made comments or done things that have affected other folks. So just when you do this, just be known that it is essentially like its own course and you still have to go in and kind of monitor as a student, as a teacher. Uh, I can switch between my groups as well. So it is very powerful. It's an amazing feature. I love it. Um, and you also notice on the left-hand side below dashboard and courses, there is a group section. As soon as, as you create groups in your course, you can actually flip to those groups pretty quickly. I'll go back to my groups. Uh, and so I can see all those groups. I'm gonna go back really quickly to my roster um, and back to my groups again. So moving students in and out is really not that hard. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping. Managing could take a little bit of extra work. Uh, and Max is going to talk about importing because you can import your student list from a CSV file if you want to. Um, now, real quickly before we move on to Max, you can create assignments. And this is what Max is going to talk about. You can create assignments and you can make those assignments to be group assignments. This is also the beauty. So if you're thinking about differentiating, I might have a high group, a low group, a medium group. I might have a group working on um, the BFG, I might have a group working on something else. I can make assignments to fit those groups where I can differentiate those groups. And then down below, instead of assigning to the core section, I can actually assign it to the groups. And so now those assignments are being sent to individual groups. So I could create an assignment for just group one. You're the only ones who get this specific assignment for group one, and I can create an assignment for group two if I want to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. So I'm right now I'm going to hit stop sharing. Um, um, I'm going to throw it over to Max and Max is going to share. And Max, you've been using groups in your course and I'd love for you to share. Uh, what have you done with it? Maybe a benefit? What's the, why as a teacher should I invest in learning how to use groups? Yeah, thank you. Well, first of all, I learned a lot by just sitting in on this little training right now. Um, the reason why I wanted to use groups is I had, uh, we just finished up a book club um, maybe a week or two ago, and students had a, they had a collaborative um, assignment. They created a presentation, you know, videos, recordings onto a Google slide with a variety of texts and stuff. And I wanted them to uh, submit one assignment instead of a bunch of different assignments. And I also want to give them feedback on it. So to make the workflow easier for me and um, just to really just see what I could do with this, because I'm going to start a new unit soon where it's going to be uh, first uh, partner work and then group work. And I want to be able to, you know, just keep it more organized and uh, make it easier for me when I do my final grading stuff for assignments. Um, so yeah, we'd like me to share my screen and show you doing, and uh, you know, uh, feel free yeah, to totally stop me if I'm, if I'm missing anything or moving too fast or too slow, whatever. Yep. I always have to double check with the students nope, if it's actually totally working. Um, so yeah, so as uh, Chris said, you press people and uh, this was the book club expert groups. We were reading uh, realistic fiction books and I created uh, these groups for them here and um, this is the one I'm going to be making maybe tomorrow uh, for our research group. And um, I would right now just create, you know, my 10 different groups that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
and I would drag and drop them. I give kids a Google form to fill out because I like kids to choose who their group member is going to be. And I try to accommodate that, which is always difficult, but you know, you try to match and level and whatever. Um, so then I, you know, I make the list in Google for in Google, um, to the Google form system. And then I basically, um, just drag and drop the names into the correct groups. Um, because of the amount of students I have, it's manageable, uh, but it is something I would do in advance though, because you want to make sure this actually works. Um, so once you have your group, you can, you can also do it by, um, importing a group using a CSV file. I've tinkered with it. It's a little bit messier. Um, you basically download a file that has all the information and then you find the students and you put numbers there. I don't know if it saves you more time than just dragging and dropping. Um, we have yet, I've yet to find out um, what's the best way, but overall drag and dropping for me is actually a pretty smooth uh, system of doing it. Um, the one thing you have to add is uh, once you have your assignment, which was, this was the instructions for the book talk presentation, you know, links, some, some things. Um, and here for the group assignment, you have to say, this is a group assignment. And then you can choose if you want to grade students individually or as a group. I opted for grading them as a group because I know I can override a grade um, later if I know that, well, this student actually didn't participate or if this student did all the work, whatever. Uh, and then you can find the group set that is going to be in that book in that club. And I can't change anything right now because the assignment's already done. That's the thing you have to remember. You can't modify any of the changes once you started the assignment, once they've actually submitted work. Uh, but of course, they only submit the work when they're done with the assignment. So you find the group you want to put in there and then you can decide if it's uh, individual grade or not, which is great. So then uh, in SpeedGrader, this was a great presentation actually. It's a great example of it. They had a Google slide, it's interactive, links, videos, audio recordings. And then uh, I gave them a grade, um, they earned a four on this and uh, it goes to all of them at once. And then I even had time to record video feedback and just appreciating their, their work and they all get the same video. So, you know, 60 students gets turned into basically um, 20, um, grading opportunities instead of 60 individual grading opportunities, which has been great. Um, so just at the very basics, it's just a nice way to simplify grading a little bit, simplify who gets assignments. Um, I mean, right now during COVID, we're obviously scrambling at times. So this would just be a nice way to make it uh, easier, but also I could see it being a cool way of giving students who need more challenges. You can give them a more complicated uh, assignment, or maybe, you know, you want to give them more of a modified assignment. It's a bit, um, at their level. So sky's the limit really. Um, so yeah, that's, oh, that's uh, awesome. That's the quick version overall. I mean, it's, um, wasn't too complicated. I think the biggest issue is just having time to, to do it, but once you've done it, it's very straightforward. And, um, I can see myself doing it for all group work assignments in the future. Definitely. I love it. And so you, one of the things you mentioned was when you did your feedback for, for group A or group B, mm -hmm. all the students in that group saw your video feedback. So you didn't have to go to each student. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other thing you mentioned too, is it's a group. So if you said, Hey, this, this, this group gets a four or whatever the score was, everyone in this, that group, every individual on the grade book, you would see that, that those individuals in that group would get the same score. And then if you wanted to, you could go to the grade book or in speed grader, mm -hmm. actually you couldn't do it in speed grader. Could you, you go to the grade book and you could overwrite the score yeah. if you wanted to, right? If it's really necessary. And then you can do groups that are just, you know, one student, if you know, that's the case or, and you can have different size groups really easily. So it's not like it has to be an even amount of groups. There's a lot of flexibility right. with it. So, right. yeah. Was there any um, challenge or difficulty or any suggestions you might give to a teacher who's like, Hey, I haven't done groups. I'm kind of, I want to try it out. What should I know? Um, I would uh, do it, do it for first for a test assignment, just to see okay. what it's like, because once you have students turn stuff in, you can't change the group settings. So if you made a mistake somewhere, it's going to mess everything up. So I would say whenever you try anything in Canvas, really try it with an assignment that doesn't, it's fine if it doesn't work out the way you want it to work. Yeah. Make it a fun Especially, assignment even, right? Yeah. It doesn't even have to be an assignment. No. So yeah. Um, I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, for our audience, is there any questions or comments or if they want for Max to share. Oh. Pat's thinking. Yeah. Uh, the one question I was going to ask is about if like you can assign the groups different things. Um, and you've answered that. So it's, <laughs> that kind of throws. There you go. I really, really do uh, like um, being like 
having different groups do different things and having them teach each other sometimes. Yeah, I know. And I think that's a, and, and then I think even like, like Max had mentioned, like I, I might have a modified group that might get a modified assignment. Mm -hmm. It's the same project, but maybe the assignment's modified. So I know this group can work on that maybe, right? Yeah. Um, with different groups, can you send in like um, modified rubrics? Because because like we're supposed to all put them under the same rubric for an assignment that's created at the same standard. But um, is there a way to modify the rubrics for like IEPs and 504 type things? I don't think you could have multiple rubrics on the has same assignment. Has to be assignment. multiple. Has to be different assignments. Completely yeah. different assignment. So you, in my opinion, it would be a different assignment altogether. Anyways, at the intention, same project, different assignment, different rubric, but this group is receiving maybe a modified version or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. That was a good question. I think that's great. Something I didn't even think about. And so this, we, Karen and I and Nicole were talking about this the other day about elementary teachers differentiating because they might have those groups and we're talking about set you can do this with sections but the more we talk about it the more i'm potentially leaning towards even just groups being that process that's very possible rather than creating new sections um for those modified uh, now year long if i knew i had three or four students who needed to be constantly on a different learning path maybe the, the signs were always going to be different and they weren't we were only going to be i might create a whole different section for those students uh, and assign them a different assignment altogether. It's very possible, but groups could be a good workflow. Chris, your grade book, if you have all these different groups going on, the kids who aren't in that group, it just shows they were never assigned that. Right, they would only see the assignment that they received from their group. So um, they wouldn't be aware. So you're thinking, um, if, are you thinking, hey, I wasn't assigned that different, assi I was assigned a different assignment, why? Like, would I be notified or would I have knowledge of that? Is that what you're thinking? Or also just visually in my mm -hmm. grade book, right? I'm going to have a whole bunch of blanks, right? Where kids in a spreadsheet, right? You were never even assigned that assignment. Yes, yes. In the in your grade book as a teacher, I'm thinking, if I'm thinking this correctly, I create two different assignments for two different groups. Um, my grade book... You know what, actually, it's a good question. I don't think I actually ever thought about that. What would my grade book look like if I had two different assignments for two different groups? Because in Max's it's, example, it's all the same yeah. assignment. So it's the same assignment, yeah. In. Yeah, I think, and for the students, they would only see in there, because students have a grade book too, right? They're, they're assigned, they would only see the assignment they were assigned. Okay. Um, but as a teacher, I think it's a great question. I don't know if it would just be grayed out for, let's say it's all of my students and half the students don't get that group assignment. I am thinking it's gonna be grayed out for them. But yeah. I, I, I think I, it's, um, I, I've done that when I've only given assignment to one of two sections, I've tried okay. switching it out. And then it just basically, it just goes gray. It's it just, just goes, goes gray where there's no functionality. So it's, yeah. it's not yeah. a to-do list. It's yeah, yeah okay. And I, question, think for, and I think for teacher's purpose, it would make sense that you probably name yeah. it, you name the assignment the same thing, but you have some sort of modification in the title to know the different, and then that would, you know, like book talks, and then it's just one, two, three, or whatever. Yeah, no, 100%, dude.